Hi everyone, in this video we will make a POV clock with some SMD components and custom PCBs that I have right here. Some time ago jlcpcb.com, this company, writes to me and asked if I want to make a project with them. And I was like, yes of course I want to make a project with you, but I don't really know what, sh what should I make. So I spent the night on designing my board and I decided to make a POV clock, that's short for persistence of vision. That's clock or display, something like this, and this is basically a device that uses only LEDs, single LEDs, to display things like text or images. I actually make this project. It was my first ever Arduino project. And that was a huge challenge for me because I completely didn't know how to use Arduino and how to program things. But I figured that out, it's working and you can check out this video right here or here. So because I already know how POV clocks work, and this project will be too simple for me, I decided to make it a little bit more challenging and to use some components that I don't know how to use. As you can see, this PCB used basically only SMD components. I don't really have a lot of experience in SMD soldering, so I decided to use as many SMD components as I can to learn how to solder them. This board is also my first design in KiCad, because previously I used Eagle, but I decided to switch to KiCad because it's free and it's open source. So after designing those boards in KiCad, I export the Gerber files and upload them to glcpcb.com. They reviewed my boards and let me know that they are okay. There are some cool features on their website like calculator where you can calculate cost of your PCB and this calculator has a lot of features, you can choose what parameters of your board you want to have. There is also a Gerber viewer where you can see your PCB and how it will look like. You can also easily manage all your orders and you see how they are producing it, like you see every single process of production. But the best thing about JLC PCB is probably the price, because for 10 pieces of 10 by 10 centimeters board, the cost is only $2. That's probably the cheapest PCB producer that I've ever found. Also quality of those boards is really really awesome, just take a look at them. After measuring all of the connections on every single PCB, they are all okay, that's fine. If you want to download the schematic, PCB layout files or whatever else, just check out the link in the description, there is everything. There is a link to instruct tables where you can find like the, the instruction on how to make this thing. There is also a link to JLC PCB if you are interested, if you have some boards to make. I really really can recommend this company to you. You can also find in the description a list of parts and things that you need to make this project. So now you know everything about PCBs for this project, because this... So now you know everything about PCB for this project, because PCB in this project is quite a big part of it. But now let's take a look at what else we will need to make it. We will need some SMD resistors. As you can see I have quite a lot of them because I am not sure which values I will use. Right here I have 150 ohms, 100 ohms, that's 200 ohms and those are 1.5 kilo ohms. Package of these resistors is 2006. We will also need some SMD capacitors and right here I have 100 picofarads and 100 nanofarads, they are in the same package as the resistors. 
Here we have some LEDs in different colors. Here is the Atmega 8, some battery holders, transceptors, but I'm not sure if I will use them, some connectors for the programmer, some gold pins, and here I have soldering paste to solder the small components to PCB. I never used something like this, so we will see how it will turn out. The first thing that we have to do is soldering. To do it I will use hot air soldering iron and soldering paste. Uh, here I have soldering paste and here is my soldering iron with hot air. So it basically works like a normal soldering iron but it hasn't a tip that you touch the soldered parts. It just blow the hot air. I haven't a lot of experience with SMD soldering I just soldered once at Mega 328 to my PCB that I made at home. Let me show you. Here is my snake robot. And here is PCB for this project. And right there, there is at Mega 328. And I soldered that and it really, really works all the time. So I think soldering to this PCB will be simpler because it's more professional and also with soldering paste it should be much 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 simpler. And you know these days SMD components are everywhere, they are cheaper, smaller, SMD soldering is very important and this project is perfect opportunity to learn this. Alright so now let's put soldering paste on this PCB. I'm not really sure how to do this, but I think I will put a little bit of soldering paste on all of the pads and then put all of the components on it. Here I have my soldering paste, so let's start. Soldering paste done, now let's put components on it. All of the components are placed and it's time to solder them. SMD components ready. It's time for through hole components. That was a lot of work, but finally this board is ready. Let's connect this board to the USB ISP programmer, open the Arduino and see if it works. So let's upload a program. It's working, but I think I have somehow a problem because two of the LEDs are not working. I messed up connection a little bit. I use the ADC6 and ADC7 pins on the Atmega, but I just found on the internet that those two pins cannot be used as an output. You can use them as analog inputs, but you can output digital or analog things on those two pins. So that's quite a problem right now. But I think I will just add two jumper wires to connect this to the normal Atmega ports. So I add two jumpers, it doesn't look good, but at least it works. Here I have the LiPo battery, the program is already uploaded. Let's connect it. And here is the jumper that works like a switch. And here we have it. 
there is too bright to see the effect and it's also hard to see it on the camera but what you should see now is the text which says Arduino so let me just show you few pictures because it, this effect is much more visible on the pictures That's all for this project, I hope you like it There were some mistakes that I made with the PCB mainly but mistakes are there to learn something out of them so next time I will try to do better don't forget to give thumbs up to this project if you like it and subscribe to my channel if you want to make it check out links in the description this project is available on the Instructables, Hackaday and YouTube if you have any question just ask me in the comments because this project is handheld it's hard to see this effect with eyes so I want to make a second part of this project and add like a 3D printed case for it and a motor so that it will be easier to see it with eyes. Let me know what you think about this idea in the comment below. Huge thanks to JLCPCB.com for supporting this project. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See you in the next video. Oh, my God.